Hi everybody, welcome back. Yep, just went and set up the mini bike. Thanks for tuning us in over here at Job's Honda Town. Mini bike engine building town. Having some fun over here. Let's see what we're getting into today. Go ahead and shut the door. Chop's looking good out there. Love that chop. Trying to block out some of this glare. All right, good to go. Okie dokie. Get things tuned in here for you guys. One second, please. And there we go. Okie dokie. For today. Yeah. Make sure all my lights on, everything's good here. Oh, let me turn off my fan. We got some noise in the background here. And there we go. Not too bad here today. It's a little noise in the back. Or having the fan off will be okay because the weather's quite nice today. It was actually kind of cold this morning. And yeah, I got some other good news too. All that junk that was over here. Yeah, my, my Briggs, my eight horse is still sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> kind of got things cleaned up. And yeah, got the air conditioner installed. <laughs> yeah. Still need to do a little trim around it. I'm going to put a little trim on there. You can see a little sunlight. Eh, maybe a little bit down there. Eh, a little bit over here. We got us an air conditioner, guys. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, it's on there. Let me see here. Boop. Digimatic. Digital. Controls. So it's got the auto. So I can just set the temperature. It'll come on by itself. I'll be able to come out here and shop. will be nice and cool. Oh, I'm loving it, guys. <laughs> Good old 110 AC window unit. <laughs> loving it yeah and just got it plugged in over here this is my, my big power that's running over here so yeah this is my main breaker panel here which old school breaker panel I know but yeah all good working <laughs> we get air conditioning <laughs> yeah and right now yeah it is uh, 77 degrees in here go ahead and turn that off yeah Oh yeah. And over here. That's what you call ported, guys. <laughs> Huge golf ball ports. Or as, as I like to call them, I can flow some golf balls now. Went ahead and ported the intake side to match my intake. And I'll show you here real quick what I like to do. I like my intake size. It's smaller than the opening to begin with. I like that. I like for this opening to match my valve cup. So as long as these two openings are the same, we're going to have a tremendous amount of flow. And it's going to be muy bueno taco time. So, yeah, that's good to go. Went ahead and went up to Cycle House. Get your tune back in here. Went ahead and went up to Cycle House and used Jerry's Ford and pouring tool. Got that all worked out. And over here on the exhaust side, since I'm probably going to use this muffler, I went ahead and ported the inside of that muffler. Oh, it's nice and smooth. It's actually not ported, it's polished. And on these blocks, on the exhaust side, if you guys can see, there's threads in there. Some people will pour out those threads to be able to get them to flow to a pipe and use a flange, but you can also use the threads on these mufflers. They just screw right in. And get this screwed in all the way to, yeah, right there. 
that's pretty much where I marked it. And let me get my flashlight here, see if we can get a little peek down in there. Because it looks really good now, guys. If you guys can see, it's hard to get a shot there. But yeah, you can see right down into that pipe. There's no turns, there's no hiccups, there's no nothing. It's going to flow like it should. <laughs> it's going to flow like, it, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's going to flow good. And we also, if you look down and you can see some crosshatch, we went ahead and ran a dingle ball home through here because went ahead and ran the dingle ball to clean everything up. So it's all cleaned up in the bore. Didn't oversize it because the piston is actually in really good condition. The rod, not so much. Yeah. Took it out pretty good. Right there. When that dipper was broke off, it wasn't getting no oil. So I'm thinking the dipper wasn't broke off for too long. Because, yeah. This is what it should have looked like. And this dipper even is twisted. It should have looked like this. But that's the bottom of the piston rod cap. And that should have been on there to dip and sling oil. And Plinko, that was gone. So, yeah. And it was getting some oil, but it took a, it took some chunks out. Set those right there. Hang that back up. And this is the other side of the, you know, the power side. Yeah, it whittled out quite a bit there. I was able to rattle. Blunga, blunga, blunga. Let me show you guys here. Crankshaft. And on these, the gears do slide off once you get the crankshaft cleaned up. Gear slides off. You always want to check this keyway. Make sure this keyway is the one that drives the cam gear. And make sure that keyway is good. Yeah, that's all muy bueno. So, taco time. Slide those out of there. Make sure I got this going the right way. Uh, there we go. Goes that way. There's lots of play. If you guys can see there. <laughs> it's worn out big time. These rods don't have bushings. They get oiled from this hole right here and from the slots on the side. This oil comes in right here. If you look, there's a slot right there, right there, and this hole right here where it drips down in. It does a pretty good job, actually, believe it or not. For not having bushings, it actually does an amazing job, and these things last. This engine still ran. It just rattled and made some noise. But luckily, the crankshaft is beautiful. It's looking great. The radius is still good on each side. Always want to check that radius, otherwise the crankshaft will crack. I've seen it happen. It's good all the way around. So the crankshaft, yeah, it's good. Super good. Super duper. But right here, not so much. And let me just go ahead and get a pair of pliers and I'll go ahead and pop this off. And when I say pliers, I mean little baby pliers. <laughs> Many bikes need little tools, so they're just little baby pliers to get in here and grab this piston ring clip. And you got to kind of pry it in and pull it out at the same time. Just like that. Now we can push the pin out. Because these are free floating pins. They don't have to be pressed in or nothing funny like that. Actually, it should slide out, but it's kind of hung up in there. <laughs> of course. See if I can give it a little tap here. I want to be nice on this piston. I don't want to mess up the piston. Mm. 
Give me a little tapping tool here. Yeah, this one has to be rapid, ratchet. Muy bueno. Taco time. Small end of the rod actually looks good. It was tight on the pin. So yeah, that's that's all good. Yeah, the pin is just really tight in that bore. But it's good. It's super tight in that bore. Let's see if I can just barely. Yeah, give a little, just gotta kind of spin it and pull it there. Yeah, that looks, that looks great. That feels wonderful. Yeah, that feels wonderful. So, yeah, there's no play there. That, that fits absolutely perfect. So that's, that's gonna be good. The rings even look like brand new too. You can see the ring. I still have lots of ring to squish down. I got to really push on it to squish it. So this wasn't the problem. This was. It wasn't low on compression because of that. The piston rods worn out because the dipper was broke off. So that's getting replaced. And that's going to get an aluminum ARC rod probably with the big, that's stronger with the dipper that has a hole in it to where it, it, it drips oil from the top and it injects oil from the dipper. The dipper has a tube that goes in and you get pressurized oil when it dips down it pressurizes it and it works way better so that's what's going to happen there get that good give me a towel back here and wipe my hands off because i'm digging in the engine again as i love so back to where we were put the crankshaft over here because it's good sliding the pipe back out here That's good. Ready to bolt on. Everything else is good. I wanted to figure out what was up with this head gasket. Because I went ahead and surfaced this down and it was flat. It, it wasn't, you know, it's still, I just didn't do a lot here because I could realize it's good. That's a good gasket. If I cleaned it up a little more, I could reuse that. And actually what you do is you heat them up and you, you, uh, you, 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 you hit them with the flame and it makes the, the copper soft again. It, you anneal it, essentially, with the with the torch. Give you guys a little, a little show here real quick. There it goes. When you kneel it, it changes color. See how that changed color? See it change purple? Shut that off. See the different color, guys? On that corner right there, see the different color? That's annealed. That's softer than the rest of the gasket right now. When I let that cool down and go back to normal, that will eventually just normalize and come back the same. But when you bolt them on brand new, you should anneal them. Let them, they're as soft as possible. Really get them to squish down. <laughs> Trying not tan myself there. Really get them to squish down tight when, you're, when they're annealed and soft and you bolt the head down and torque it. It sucker seal good. So yeah, we're good to go there. That's good. Once again, and what I'm what I was doing was you got to find the problem. If you don't find the problem with your process, then then you're still going to have the problem. And I don't know what the problem here was before, but yeah, we're good here. So <laughs> got my big old keen carburetor, my custom made intake. Yeah, it's going to flow like no tomorrow, and that's also too. You want to make a match up, which they basically do now. That bolts on right there. <laughs> it's going to work perfect. And I will cut a, I will custom cut a gasket for that now, so it'll be good. Be 
Muy bueno. Yeah, so. Where I ended up. Get this wipe down here. Oh, let me go ahead and move my gas bottle so it doesn't start doing two-step buggy again. <laughs> I've had several fly off the workbench. Get that workbench shaking and that gas bottle is about to fly. So, the head, it wasn't really flat. That was really what I realized. The block wasn't either. P220. Super fine body working 220. Super fine. I've measured this table with a straight edge. Right here is about one of the flattest parts on it, actually, luckily enough. That used to be the side I used. This is actually the back side that I had. I turned it all around. I use this right now. Got it almost touching all the way. If you guys can see the scratches on there. See right there where it's not quite touching and right there. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, yeah. Oh, that did it. Okay, cool. That's about the fourth time I've done this head. We got it, guys. That licked it. See how we're shiny all the way across, except for just barely right there, but I'm not. that's on the outside of the bolt hole, so the gaskets. Yeah, the gasket doesn't even, whoop. Yeah, gasket doesn't even go there, so yeah, we're good. Muy bueno. The head with surface wasn't flat. These heads from Briggs were never had the best machining. They used a big cushy gasket on these older ones from the factory, and the gasket would eliminate the variables, and you're better off to just d deal with it. <laughs> That's good now, 100%. Set that right there. <laughs> that makes me real happy. And same thing up here, guys. Put my clip right there so I don't lose it. Right there. And all the way over here. This whole side wasn't even touching. And this whole side wasn't even touching. Basically, the... The cylinder deck surface was flat, and this was going down. <laughs> and the machining from the original get-go was just never the best, and then it probably warped a little bit over time. So, But the best thing about these don't want it to do that. You don't want it to vibrate and make noise. Oh yeah! Still not here, but we're good here. It's still not quite there and still not quite there. Oh, we're looking good, guys. This is probably the eighth time I've done this cylinder. I worked on this for a bit last night, and we're very close. I think we got it, guys. I can still just see just a little bit of fade right there. But all the way around, once again, the gasket surface. 
Yeah, that looks good. Looks real good. I know. Actually, the, yeah, the gasket does go over there. Yeah, so we almost, I'm going to, yep, a couple more passes because that does need to touch right there for that to really seal. Okay. A little more. Love that sandpaper, guys. Oh, yeah, we're <laughs> we got it. Oh, yeah, it's just ever so slight ever so slight right there but we've machined quite a bit off yeah because i'm just about down to my valve surface we decked off a bit there guys this the compression has now been raised up too <laughs> let's get this piece off here because it's dirty wipe off our dust and luckily it's just cast iron dust, so it's not, you don't have to worry about it sticking in your body. Let's give it one more hit with a fresh piece here. Make sure there's no ripples, no funny business. Nice and flat. Oh, yeah, we got it. I got scratches all the way to the edge. Yes! 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 All right. Use a sticky to... Use a sticky to stick up the dust. Because <laughs> we're good. That cylinder head is good. Oh, that looks so good. That looks so good. Oh, you can hear it in the noise. It doesn't just go, you know, like clunk and rattle. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, guys. <laughs> that is going to be so good. Yes. Muy bueno. As you see, everything's all cleaned up now. 100% actually that head is looking great this head is gonna work perfect along with this cylinder or along with this block it's way more than just a cylinder yeah and I'll just show you guys up here too since we're right here this is my intake valve and if you look on there you can see the see the shiny edge I lap the intake valve. Make sure it's clean. Clean. Clean, clean, clean. Open engine in the shop. Things have to be clean. Yeah, that I can barely spin it because it fits so tight now. <laughs> That's good. Intake valve is in check. And actually the valve spring and the retainer. The retainers on these are a little different. They slide in. See that? They slide in and then lock down. Bring that up like that when it's in the block. And I'll show you here. They go in the block and the valve spring actually goes in the bottom, not in the top. And I need to work on this one. This is the exhaust. That's clean, so let's get it gritty. 
Make sure everything's clean. You want the stem to be super clean. You don't want grit on the stem. You only want grit on the edge. Just a little bit. This is really gritty stuff. It's essentially liquid sandpaper. There we go. And if it's not far off, this won't be too bad. And the intake wasn't. Okay, get a good spread on it there. And wipe it off so it's dry. Good. Good. I like to get one last final clean, like that, and then it was actually going to stick. Yeah, if it sticks. You can pull the valve out. Good, good. Wipe that off. Oh, that's looking good. Wipe the valve off. That's looking. Uh, yeah, I got a line all the way around it. Yes. Yeah, that's actually really doesn't need much more. These valves are in great condition. See the line all the way around? That line is what I just ground in with the lapping compound. I know that that edge meets this edge 100%. That is 100% clean and good to go on the intake and the exhaust. Yep, that looks real good, guys. Looks very good, actually. Muy bueno. Taco time in the city. There we go. Those are good. That's good. This thing is on its way to becoming a fully built Blockzilla. I'll show you guys a couple pics here in the end. Basically, when you get these things all fully ported like this and get them a lot higher compression and get them flowing a bunch of fuel, it's what you refer to as a Blockzilla. <laughs> the Raptor Blockzilla is one nasty little beast, guys. As you can see, I don't put my name on it because I know how nasty these things can really get. <laughs> and now with my porting job, and everything else we're gonna do. Oh yeah, and I wanted to show you guys here. I saw one on here. Where did I see it? Oh, it was on this side, that's right. There was one chunk I saw where that, that dipper hit it. Yeah, it's right there. See the line across there? Yep. That's where it got chunked. This dipper was, it must have been in here flinging around. If you guys can see right, see the scratches? See if I can get you guys over here in the light. See the, there's scratches. See the scratches in the bottom? Luckily, that dipper didn't get flung around too much and destroy anything else. Everything else is looking good. Our cam journal and our crank bearing, our crank surface are looking great. So, yeah. That's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Got all kinds of flow now. So, Blockzilla, here we come. <laughs> Can't wait, guys. And I, I was just adding up, putting my 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 shopping party list together for the whoa, throw my my goodies around there, the the place that I've used to to build these these five horsepowers for years now is OMB. OMB Warehouse has pretty much everything you'll need for these things. Actually, everything for these, and then everything else. A small engine wise predator briggs uh i i it's a it's a long list now because they have a lot of stuff but they have 
everything I'm going to need for this build. They have the rod, the side cover, the flywheel with the different ignition pickups so I can advance the ignition and make more horsepower. Uh, different camshafts, but I think since now we're going to have a much higher compression and a really good flat top piston, we might leave the stock cam and just run some nasty fuel through this thing because it's going to have a lot of compression and see what happens. If we need to, we can always just drop in a new cam. <laughs> yeah, things are looking real good here, guys. Real good. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to finish this thing up, get it banging, get that pull start back on it. One pull, be good to go. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys this. Let's just get this back apart here. Now that it's all clean, I'll drop that back in. So this is the exhaust valve. The spring goes in down here, and you essentially you hold it upside down. So your spring is in there. So you pull your spring down. Come on, pliers. You pull your spring down, put your retainer on, and you're good to go. And I'm holding my valve in down here with my finger. So slide that down, put your clip on. Good to go. It's <laughs> Flatheads are simple, guys. That's really another reason why I love them. Yet again. So... Nice and easy. Get the valve back out because now I gotta because the you know the valve drops around the spring, so now the spring can come out because the valve's out. Put that all back together so we don't lose our parts and pieces. Blockzilla on the way, guys. <laughs> That's gonna go. I I, I just want to see it on there. Let's just do it. I ain't put it back on there yet. I just wanna I wanna see my eyeballs on it. Oh yeah, there we go. Sweet. Ah <laughs> yeah. There we go. That thing is going to rip, guys. That thing is going to make some horsepower and be good to go. With the side draft carb, where we maybe have the side draft exhaust cuz with the, you know, with the threads, I can put a 45 on there and turn the muffler out this way. So, yeah. <laughs> Blockzilla, here we come. Can't wait. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Way more comes usual because we're about to get this thing finished up. I'm going to order some parts. Probably be a couple days waiting on some parts to get in because i got to make some money. But the entire build, I'll, I'll show you here at the end, $400 for everything. What I what I have here you know, will cost you a couple dollars, especially for the intake because that's custom made. But for all the, the billet parts and the rod and everything, $400, guys. $400 50 horse race engine right here <laughs> coming soon thanks for watching when in doubt figure it out the truth will set you free kickstands up guys let's ride